My name is Professor Roy Kennedy. I'm working here at Pershore College, which is one of the seven colleges in the Warwickshire College group. Now, within those seven colleges, we cover uh, lots of different subject areas, but at Pershore College, we cover horticulture, and it's horticulture that we're here today to talk about, and it's essentially the new agri-tech agenda, which is coming into horticulture, which will improve growing, improve sustainability, and improve horticultural uh, production in the UK. The agri-tech agenda is really all about innovation providing new innovation for the industry. Uh, the innovation here is actually producing strawberries in a, a low input format, but producing five times the amount of strawberries per, per uh, square metre of area, which is good for the grower, it's good for the producer, and it's good for the, the environment and good for the consumer at the end of the day. It's very appropriate that these horticultural innovations are occurring in Worcestershire area because Worcestershire contains the Vale of Evesham which is the heart of horticulture. Evesham contains all the different parts of horticulture. It's unique within the UK because it has got environments that can mean that horticulture, all types of horticultural production can occur in this area. So Worcestershire, if you're going to stimulate agri-tech or, or develop agri-tech, Worcestershire is the area to come to actually do it. The agri-tech development here at Pershore College comprises of three areas. Here you're seeing one of these areas. This is the outdoor area. It's 3D production of strawberries, but it could also be 3D production of herbs or other crops, lettuce. All of these crops grow equally well in this type of format. But we've got two other elements that are indoors. One is a, an LED facility, hydroponic facility, indoors, so it's completely uh, cut off from the outside environment. We're growing under artificial lights and also in a hydroponic setting. So that has different challenges compared to what occurs in here. The third element is a, a laboratory where we do specialised diagnostics. One of the major constraints on horticultural production and also a major effect on the environment is uh, pests and diseases. So within the laboratory we're conducting uh, or developing new diagnostics for pests and diseases of horticultural crops. And we're doing that within an Innovate UK grant which we've received and we carry out the research in conjunction with a company, a life science company called MoLogic, which has got a lot of experience in uh, diagnostics, uh, for human uh, diagnostics and also we've got a, another partner which is Berry Gardens which uh, grows 45% of the UK production of strawberries so it's very, it's very uh, satisfying that we've got these partners involved as well. I'm Richard Toft, I now work at Pershaw College, uh, my main job is to look after apple juice and cider production but Previously, I've looked after all the orchards here at college as well. We have large commercial orchards at college, uh, producing a lot of different fruits, a lot of apples, pears, plums, strawberries, all of which get grown by our students here and marketed commercially. But one of the most important things for a lot of those crops is bees for pollination. As on top of that, because of the importance of bees, uh, the college is very, very welcoming and hosting Evesham Beekeepers, part of British Beekeepers Association, uh, to have their branch apiary for their branch training here. As well as the college, we do put on beekeeping courses for the college as well. But they're of so much importance and so much importance to the horticultural industry and the, particularly the fruit growing industry that we need to do everything we can to help support the pollinators. And we started off wanting to do one hive in the back garden uh, but it has soon developed and now we're running bees commercially, uh, producing honey for the college and also through private business as well and in total with all the bees on college and everything in our private life as well, we're probably managing 60 to 70 hives, colonies of bees, which in the peak of the summer could have 80,000 bees in a colony. Beekeeping is like any other 
livestock management. They have to be, you have to understand what you're doing with them and you have to really treat them as livestock. You can't just abandon them. So they have needs just like anything else, whether it's a cat, a dog or a cow or a horse, they have to be looked after. One of the main things beekeepers have to do is to manage pests and diseases in the hives and over the last 20 years one of the headline pests and diseases has been Varroa mite and beekeepers have constantly been having to innovate to manage and control Varroa. The Varroa mite itself if you were to imagine a cat sat on your shoulders it's like that to a honeybee. Troubles with Varroa is it transfers viruses and there's a, quite a few viruses but in particular there's one particular one, the form wing virus, that is very debilitating to honeybees and that's why they have to be controlled. It was a pesticide some people put into the hives, some people used it, people started to rely on it but as with everything now the Varroa mite has become resistant to some of those products. So now we're very much, it's all about integrated pest management. What we try to teach now is how to identify the pests and diseases, how to monitor the pests and diseases, know when critical levels are being reached for the control of the pests and diseases, and then there are different methods of pest control we can use now. Uh, we try to teach it a lot so that pesticides become the last resort. This is a very important time in the industry because many growers are getting to that age where they are leaving the industry so we have to have new blood, new entrants into the industry. Also the new generation are much more savvy with the kind of technologies that we're talking about, much more savvy with the techniques, the technologies, the, the computerization of the whole system. So this is, the, these are the types of people that we need in the horticultural industry. They already exist, but they need to be shown that there, is, there, there are these areas that require these kinds of skills that they're interested in. This is part of uh, 21st century and 22nd century growing and we need to have these entrants come in to really uh, re-energise the system. So that is a, 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 an important part of this project. It's probably one of the most important parts of this project, not only getting the technology up, uptake by the industry here in the West Midlands, but also uh, getting new entrants into, the, into this uh, area and doing the training, getting them interested, doing the training and getting them completely uh, uh, familiar with the kinds of things that they have to do.